This video is a presentation of showing how to make a footed arrow shaft. Uh, that is a arrow shaft that has the typical conifer lightweight softwood like in this case Douglas fir, Port Orchard cedar, and uh, a hardwood footing that the points attached to. And the purpose is to make a stronger arrow. But the purpose is also to make something that looks kind of cool and it's not like really hard to make. So this is a finished arrow. As you can see, I've got a soft knock on here. And uh, I just, I, I thought that uh, I'd run through the steps. It's, I think, surprisingly simple and it's kind of fun to make, especially with winter coming up. So this finished arrow uh, happens to weigh... Uh, 535 grains with a 160 grain point, so 350 grain shaft spining at 55 pounds. It was made from a $3 uh, Douglas fir floorboard from Menards, and basically I cut the board up into 3 8 squares, and I had some scrap walnut, and I cut the 3 8 squares. So I'm going to demonstrate how to make that. Uh, the tools required were a bandsaw, some type of saw to saw up the blanks. And the only other tool I used is this block plane. It cost six bucks about five, ten years ago or whatever. So if you're just interested in seeing the what the footed arrow looks like, you can stop the video now. Uh, if you want to hear my long-winded explanation and demonstration of how to make it, um, Keep watching. <laughs> so that's fair warning. Uh, anyway, here it is. I decided to make this video because uh, recently I thought I'd send somebody a link showing how to make a footed arrow and I did a search on YouTube and came up with only uh, one video. So I thought, well, might be nice to, to do a video showing how to make one of these. Not that I'm an expert, but I've done it. So, the other thing I thought I'd illustrate at the same time is how to make an arrow shaft out of a board using minimal tools. You do need some sort of saw, like a band saw to do this, uh, possibly a table saw, and I'll, I'll explain that. I suppose if you were really good, you could use a small reciprocating saw. This is a four foot long Douglas fir floorboard from Menards. They're a big box hardware store in our area, or a lumber store. I tried a number of different woods and found uh, of kind of commonly available materials in boards. Douglas fir is my favorite, followed by uh, poplar, which also makes a good arrow. Part of the trick is picking out a straight grain board, and I spent about five minutes in Menards looking through their boards. And this one, it's a flat sawn board, meaning that you can see the growth rings, I hope, right here. And you can see how this was taken out of the tree. You know, this would be the bark side out here. And uh, meaning, you know, there's a flat sawn board. So, straight grain, the lines running down here as it's on through the uh, growth rings will be close to parallel. Not entirely. You can see that this came out of the tree at a little bit of an angle, but it's not terrible. And the other thing you look for, and hopefully you can see the grain here, is that the grain on the side runs straight, and you don't see it running, curving off, you know, through the board. If that's the case, you have grain runoff and it's going to break. I looked at this board and got some pretty straight grain lines going all the way down. So it's a good candidate for an arrow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark this thing. Uh, this is a floorboard, so this part's waste, the tongue and groove part. And obviously, this is waste. But keep in mind, I paid three bucks, a little over three bucks for this board. Uh, I'm going to take this side rip off this little excess on the bandsaw, and I'm going to cut just a hair under 3 eighths of an inch, uh, just a long rectangle. 
So I'll have something 3 quarter by 3 eighths roughly. Then I'll take that 3 quarter and split it in half and I'll have two 3 eighths squares. What I have here is a piece of tropical hardwood. It's Paduk. It's a scrap I've had laying around. And I'm going to make an arrow that has about that much of it. And <clears throat> the end with the point will be the hardwood. And then the balance will be the Douglas spur uh, shaft. The idea is that, you know, the arrow hits something hard. The hardwood's a lot stronger on the point. You have a good glue joint. Much less likely to break an arrow. Um, so this, too, I'm going to rip up into the same, you know, square size as that board. And I'll show you how I splice it. I went out to the garage this morning, and I did what I said I was going to do. I cut up the uh, Douglas spur into three-eighths, a little less than three-eighths squares, really close to three-eighths meaning the end, 3A square. I cut it on the bandsaw, and uh, again, I'm hoping you can see the grain lines here are pretty straight. Um, I ended up getting five good pieces out of that board. I would have got six, but I screwed up on the bandsaw. wasn't paying attention. So five into three dollars, whatever that works out to, for the cost per shaft, not too bad. So I got the Douglas spur cut up, and I've already kind of set up a spline joint. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, the Padouk turned out to be worthless and weak. It, it broke on me. I should have known that I've used it before, but I forgot it's nice for a decorative wood, but it doesn't have much strength. So. I had some black walnut in the garage, so I cut some pieces for the footing out of black walnut. So I'm going to take this blank and I'm going to mark it up so that uh, I've got a pointed end. And you can see there's a mark five inches up from the end and a center mark down there. So I have to mark that or lay that out so that I can make that cut. And or you could do it on a, like a belt sander too. So I'm going to take my straight edge. Using a couple of blanks to, just to support the straight edge. So they're the same thickness. I'll lay that down. Take a nice little pencil here. Mark a line. on that side and then on the other. Just lining that up with that five inch mark and my center line. Probably be easier to use like a bevel gauge but I'm working in the rec room. So there's my pointy layout for that. All this will be cut off, and I'll demonstrate or show you what I mean by that in a minute if it's not clear. So I'm going to take my bandsaw and cut a line just to the edge of that pencil line on both sides. Then just a black sander with some 80 grit to flatten it out and take out any irregularities. So that's the shaft, the, the work you got to do to the shaft itself. The next step is to mark the, the uh, part that's going to be the footing or the part that's going to glue on that's going to hold the point. I want to cut a piece 8 inches long. So I'll put my square on there and make a mark across. And then I want uh, to cut a slot in that that's 5 inches long. So I'll make another mark at five. Obviously, if you're doing a lot of these, it makes sense to uh, nice to lay them on the table, clamp them down, and just take a square and go across. I always mark my waist side, so that's waist. So then the next thing is I've got a mark from the five-inch mark to here, a center line, because that's where I'm going to cut a slot. You make doubly sure that you're in the middle. 
and uh, if there's a gap even, you're sawing in the gap. So there we go. Okay, the center line, I'll take the band saw. I don't use a fence for that. I just feed the line into the blade. Go straight up, stop right there. I'll cut it off at 8 inches. And give you an idea what all that meant. It's kind of like one of those cooking shows. I've got something prepared. Uh, here it is. Two pieces put together. Now, this is a very, very important part. Notice the small Chinese C-clamp. doesn't have to be Chinese. That's centered right on that line with some gentle pressure. That keeps this wood from splitting. Uh, the, the big failure for the Paduk, as soon as I did this, that one of the ears just popped off. The stuff's just really weak. So, the reason for that clamp, and it's very important, is to get, to take the stress or keep this thing from splitting. Now, you see the way these parts slide together. I took this, after I cut it on the band saw, and I took a block sander and just smoothed the sides. It was pretty close to, to good. Uh, but when I glue this up, this little end here, should be equal to the curve of the saw, which is about a 30 second. I'm probably going to blunt that a little bit because I want that to seed in there without a gap. Um, you'll notice when I first showed it to you, it wasn't all the way down. This is a dry fit. There's no glue. There's no uh, lubricity yet. So it's kind of a bitch to get it to go all the way down to that point. Once the glue's on there, it'll be slickered and snot. It'll go all the way to the end. And I'll glue this up next. I'm going to clamp along here and then walk away for, you know, like six hours and let it dry. So, glue up's next. Okay, so I'm going to glue this sucker up. Um, leaving my little C-clamp down here. And I want to make sure that I get glue on all the surfaces. I'm going to... Pipe on to watch any of my videos. You see me use this a lot. Um, I've made uh, bows with this, uh, both uh, all wood bows and also uh, fiberglass laminated bows, where you glue up the wood in the handle. It's really strong. Works good. Uh, doesn't require any kind of heat to cure. Just normally ambient. It's also another pipe on three, which I've never used. I, it's supposed to be a little stronger, a little better. I was going to buy it, but this bottle's three bucks. The other one was five, and uh, I've never had a problem with this. I couldn't convince myself to spend the extra two bucks. So anyway, this one's getting kind of kind of to the end here, but I don't know how much is in probably a little out of camera here, but bear with me. I'm just going to put a crap load of this stuff in there. I'm actually going to use my stick to get it to slide down there. I just want to make sure that I've got a lot of good coverage. I'm not really concerned about using too much because what doesn't get used will get wiped away. What I am concerned with is making sure that when I make this joint that every single surface has glue on it. So I'm kind of splaying this thing apart, shoot some glue in there. The other thing that's nice about this pipe bond too is it has a 10-15 minute work time. Some glue starts setting up right away. And this gives you some time to mess around with it like I'm doing here. I think I got enough glue on there. Now, if you weren't convinced that was enough glue, because I'm not, I am going to glue on this surface too. Alright, so I'm kind of sloppy with the glue. But, 
doesn't really matter because most of what you see on the shaft will be cut away once we make it round. So I just want to make sure that I get good coverage. Now we're ready to slip the two pieces together. There we go. Now obviously you're going to want to uh, make sure this is clamped up square. I'm going to get rid of some of this excess so I can see what I'm doing here. There's <laughs> tons of glue here, which is okay. I just want to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to get this squared up. And now, I want to make sure I get this seated all the way down. It looks like we've got a ways to go. I'm going to relieve a little clamp pressure. And I think It's hard to tell. I think I'm in the bottom there. <clears throat> too much glue. Well, not too much. Well, it looks like I could go down a little farther. I did hear it like click a little bit when I released the clamp. So I could have got a little, a little bit of a fracture there. But looking at my five inch mark in the end of the ears. I think I'm pretty well buried in there. From a strength point of view, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. I just really didn't want to have a little hole down there at the bottom. But I'm going to make sure that all the surfaces are flush. And start clamping this thing. I use these welding spring clamps seem to do a good job. Alternate side to side here. I guess the visual part of this isn't that great. I glanced at the camera and it's a little bit out of frame. Trying to get it back in there okay. I think that should do it. So, this is the part for me that's hard. Patience. I have to wait till this dries. Once it dries, I'll trim the ears back. You can see what everything looks like right now. And uh, that's the start of it. So, essentially, once it dries, I'm going to make it look like it did before as far as a continuous rectangle all the way down. Um, you know, right now obviously you got those ears sticking out. And then after that we'll start rounding it. Okay, when I last left it was this morning and I had uh, put the clamps on and glued the footing onto the arrow. Since then I took the clamps off and uh, I put a straight edge along here and I trimmed the sides with the band saw to get it near flush. Right now it's a little asymmetrical, which I'm not real happy about, but I'm doing the best I can here. I think in the end it really won't make much difference, but we'll see. Um, I did have a slight hole down here on this side, which I'm not real thrilled about. But again, when I actually round this thing over, See what it looks like. Worst case, I'll glue a sliver of black walnut in there. Um, I'm now down to the part where I need to make this square around. And uh, there's a number of ways to do this, which if you search on YouTube, you'll find a bunch of different ways. Uh, 
most of it involves uh, putting like a, a 3 8 square drive attachment on the end of the shaft and using a drill to spin the shaft and using either a saw blade or a router to round the thing over as it goes through and that works. It's noisy, it's dusty. Um, I've done it. I had a router set up a while back. When I started making bamboo I took it down because I never really liked using it. There's another alternative that is using a little plane. I bought this one at Home Depot about ten years ago for six bucks. Uh, it's not like the greatest plane in the world but it does work. I've got the blade set for a fine cut. You can see I've got the bevel side down. I don't want this to like dig into the grain of the wood and um, what you do is you basically you take the square and you flatten each corner so you end up with a shape of it looks like a stop sign. I've already done the other end. It looks like that. Doesn't take long, less than five minutes really. And uh, I'm going to carry through and do the other side. Basically, you can see this flat here is about an eighth wide. Each flat's about an eighth wide. You want to make it uh, so all sides are equal. And after that, then what you do is you come back and you take the plane and you knock these points off. So you're going from eight sides to 16 sides in short order. It only takes a couple swipes of the plane. Um, I'll do that show you what it looks like and after that sandpaper. All in all, probably takes about 15 minutes to turn this from a square into a into a dowel. So I'll give you an idea of what the uh, what the planing process looks like. This is kind of funny. Uh, I, I've done that as I just described with a plane just laying it on a phone book. Uh, it's convenient to have a uh, V block I feel like making a V-block. I don't know if you recall that uh, this was a floorboard and it was tongue and groove. This is the tongue side. And it so happens that this drops in there rather nicely. Kind of holds it in place. But you need an end stop. Well, I had trimmed off this part of the board when I made it. Trimmed off the tongue side too. I just cut a little piece put it in there, put some glue, it's an end stop. So it worked out pretty well. Easy, simple, you know, not a big deal. So, these are the kind of shavings I'm getting off of this. Basically I've set the plane so it's about as, cuts about as finely as possible. So what I'll try and do now is uh, show you what it looks like to actually use the plane. So I'm just holding this little, you know, stick in the more or less V-block on the table with my hand at the moment. And I'm just going to come here and take a few swipes and get it where that flat there is a heavy eighth inch. And that's, that's about it. Do the other side real quick here track of where I'm at. You can see this isn't like extraordinarily difficult. Sometimes you have to focus on one area more than another to keep it all roughly even. I don't know that it makes a huge difference. There's two sides done. I'll carry this through all the way to the end. I'm just trying to show you. It does actually go pretty quick. It's not a big deal not super hard to do. I'm just eyeballing this. So I'll show you the end when I get to it here, which I've got one more side to do. That looks about right. So let's see what the end looks like. Change the camera angle a little bit here. There it is. I can make some of you. Oh, you got one more peek on there. 
Yeah, I gotta take the top down a little bit. But you can see what it looks like. You can see where I'm going. So I'm gonna do that. I'll make it all eight sided and I'm gonna knock the points off the plane the same way and then I'll come back. I'd say about five minutes went by, not much time at all. And uh, I took the points off like I said. And eh, it's pretty close to round. It's obviously not round yet. But I went down the whole shaft. That was obviously the footed end. Here's the, what's going to be the knock end. Right now I'm probably oh, 3 8 diameter, 23 something like that. So the next step, and you can see here's the kind of shavings I'm getting off of this. What I think is a funny story, I was doing this a year ago or so, and uh, I left one of these curls on the floor, and I got up and, you know, came downstairs, and my wife goes, I took your wood shaver. I go, what? She goes, look, I found this on the floor. This is usual dramatic female, in, in dramatic female fashion. <laughs> she goes, I found one of these on the floor. If one of the dogs eats that, we'll have to take them to the animal hospital. And she said she took my wood shaver. She did, in fact, mean this, the little plane. I always thought it was funny. <laughs> but maybe it's just me. Anyway, uh, I make sure I pick up all my wood shavings off the floor now so that... You know, there's no catastrophes. But uh, the next thing I'm going to do, uh, this really is pretty close to done, believe it or not. Um, I'm going to take some 80 grit paper, like of this, and I'm going to go in the garage. And basically, all I'm going to do is wrap it around the doll, like that, and sand it 20 times. I'm not going to do it under here because here, it raises a lot of dust. Basically, you sand it, turn it a quarter, turn, sand it, turn it a quarter, turn, sand it. I'll do that 20 times with 80 grit from each end. Then I'll do 100 grit and 150. Maybe even 220 if I'm feeling energetic. But uh, then I'll further round this over and get rid of the irregularities. So I'll be back. Okay, a little time sanding in the garage. Hopefully you can tell that's pretty damn round. Um, this is what the footed part looks like. That's all pretty good. Downside is uh, right now this arrow spines at about 75 pounds, which is a little more than what I need. So for my next trick, um, I'm going to make this a barreled shaft, meaning that I'm going to taper this end, you know, batter up here, narrower down here to the point. Same thing on the knock end, and I'm going to use the black point to do that. And uh, I'm going to show you how. <coughs> Maybe way more information than you ever wanted, but I'm going to put <coughs> some lines on here. Roughly three and a half, four inches apart. And Line's got to go all the way around. Doesn't have to be neat. You might wonder, what the hell is he doing? I'm going to show you. And I'm going to keep an eye on the taper on this one. I don't want to make this too narrow, but I definitely, I didn't weigh the shaft. Uh, I would expect since it's spining so heavy right now, it's probably close to 500 grains. That's a little heavier than what I want. So I put these marks on here. And you might think I'm nuts, but I'll show you what's next. Okay, like I said, I want to taper the shaft. And uh, I put these pencil marks on here. And what I'm going to do, even though I got this nice and round and sanded, I'm back to my black plane. And I'm going to take this pencil, bottommost pencil mark off. Just run the planer all the way to the end of the shaft and take off that pencil mark. And the place I see a pencil mark, I push to the end. 
I need a little bit of snag in the grain there. Gotta be careful, especially with Douglas fir, sometimes it likes to dig in. Alright, I got rid of that pencil mark. Now, I'm going to go from this pencil mark to the end. Again, taking the pencil mark off. That's all I'm focused on. What that does is it, uh, it takes wood off pretty evenly from the whole shaft. Getting some real snag on the grain there. Which actually I should probably spin the shaft around, but I'm not gonna because I'm focused on taking off the pencil mark and going to the end. Sometimes it helps if you hold the plane on a little bit of an angle. So by doing it in three steps like that, as it's closer to the end, it sees more planing ash than it does during the middle. Uh, in the middle. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the end of the shaft. I'm just running down to take off any high spots. This is what I've got. So by the time I sand that, this is, I think this is 11.30 seconds. It's my tapering tool. I can see this is going to be two videos. <laughs> I was going to try and do it in one, honestly. I've edited the crap out of my, this is 23.64. So I'm not going to bore you with doing the opposite end. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing, go back, sand it, and see where we're at. Okay, here's the completed shaft, and uh, I think it came out pretty good. Let's see what it looks like. Kind of reminds you of a pool cue. I tapered the end and uh, finished sanding, and I can spot sand it in a couple spots, but looks pretty good. Cut in a soft knock. I'll wrap this area with the red and glue to reinforce it. Um, knocks oriented so that when the bow is or when the arrow is on the bow the edge grain, the lines you see running along here, that goes against the side of the bow, like that. The big kind of hourglass shapes you see, those should face up or down. That's the stiffer side of the arrow. After all the tapering and sanding, it's spined out at 55 pounds, which is perfect for me. It weighs 350 grains, which is comparable to a lot of the Port Hartford cedars you might buy. And In my experience, they range from anywhere from like 200 grains to 400 grains, depending on what you got. So, um, it's about what I expect for Douglas fir. So. But I thought I'd put something up because I really didn't see anything on YouTube that I thought explained using this method. And uh, clearly, you know, the, the part that I did with the plane as far as making a square around, I, I think, hopefully you could see that's not really very hard. And, uh, I probably won't bother to put the other ones. I don't even know if I'll bother making them because really I do shoot the bamboo. But uh, I probably will at some point. It's a nice thing to do in the winter time when it's crappy out. But put it those do look cool. So that's the end.